Well, hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. I am one of the Photoshop guys, Corey Barker, and I am joined today by another Photoshop guy, Mr. Pete Collins. Howdy. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's been a while. Yeah. Like, like five minutes. Something Maybe like seven. Maybe seven. Yeah. All right, we are brought to you by Kelby One, who also bring you, among many great things, Photoshop User Magazine. There you have it. And that's our show. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> Threw myself all Look at that. That's awesome. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, Corey, so, uh, let me help you out. Corey, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing all right. You, you seen any great movies lately? I have not, no. but I know you have. But we'll talk about that later. Cause, Please, well, if we have to. All yeah, right. I know. I know. Huh? <laughs> but hey, let's jump right in because we want to get to some of our great tutorials. And speaking of great tutorials, how'd you like that? Smooth right to you. Corey, yes. do you have a tutorial for he us? He has set me up grand. No, oh, um, actually, I got something really, really cool. Um, of course, we've got Photoshop World. Not too far away. Yep. Coming up very soon here on April 8th through the 10th. We are going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. Very excited. But um, I actually did a really kind of interesting little promo graphic because I'm doing a pre-con at uh, Photoshop World on doing some compositing. But did this little promo graphic really quick and easy because marketing needed something or our social media person needed something that says, can you throw something together for your class? I'm like, sure. So here's one of those little techniques when you have something to do really fast. <laughs> All right. So we'll start here with a texture, a simple background texture. What I wanted to do is just find some things that were pirate themed because it's, of course, that kind of theme this year. So I found this uh, on Fotolia. It's really great, this uh, Jolly Roger with the hat on and everything like that. So, well, I can maybe use that. Here is a cool image of a pirate ship and things, you know, the very typical pirate things. We have this map right here. So these elements will work well for what we're going to build. So we're going to start with the map. Now, I already have my background texture, and I like the color of this texture that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and use this image. Now, I like merely the texture in this case, not the, uh, or not the color of the map itself. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it on over. Just hold down Shift key to make sure it drops in the center. There we go. Now, are these all RGB color space? <sighs> I'm sorry. I've been holding out so long. He really had it. to go there, didn't he? <laughs> All right, so in free transform here, I'm just going to hold down shift and option. It's going to allow me to scale it from the center. I'm just going to make it rather large here. And then I want to remove the color information of this. Simply press shift command U, and that just desaturates the image. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Now, this allows the image to blend with the background, but it's a little clunky. It's, mm -hmm. really, it's very black and white. It doesn't look right. So I'm going to recolor the image. I didn't want to use the original color. I'm simply going to make it more work with what I've got here. So I'm going to go ahead and press Command U. That brings up the Hue Saturation panel. Check on Colorize. And we'll just give this a more yellowed saturation. And you'll see just by doing that, makes it blend into that background even more so. So it's much more uniform. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, add a layer mask and get a gradient tool. Radial gradient, let's go foreground to transparent. There we go. And I'm going to bring the opacity just to 50%. I don't want to mask it completely because I just want to bring out some of that center so it's a little bit brighter in the center there. Kind of worn out in that center area. So now let's bring in the next element. Now, the ship I like, it's a great photo of a pirate ship, but it doesn't look like it's vintage enough. So I'm going to use a trick I actually used in the last episode, if you remember. I go to filter, go to texture, and use grain. And remember, I had the intensity set really high and the contrast very low. And you can see what it does. It gives me this kind of almost like ink drawing effect, kind of a pen and ink sort of thing. So go ahead and like that and go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to, as before, change the color just to give it kind of a washed out yellowish look there. There we something like that. Now, I'm not worried if it look, looks oversaturated because we're going to blend it here shortly. So. And as before, again, shift drag it on over and scale it so it fits in here. And of course, change that blend mode to multiply. And I'm actually going to bring the opacity down to about 75% there. So Now, we can see the sharp edges on the graphic there. So how do we fix that? A simple layer mask. And as before, I'm going to use that same gradient, but instead of it being radial, I'm going to use a linear gradient this time and 50% to 100%. There we go. And just come in from the top and the left to go ahead and fade out those edges there. You can see that. It's looking pretty good. Now, 
let's go ahead and bring in our skull. Now, I don't want to bring the whole image as before because we brought in the background of everything. I actually just want to go ahead and select just the skull and the hat itself. So I'm going to do or grab the magic wand tool and just simply click on the background. It's solid white, so it's much easier to select the background and then invert it. And we missed an area inside here, so let's hold down the shift key and click inside that area there. Now we'll go to select inverse. Now it's selected. I'm just going to go ahead and grab it. Again, shift drag over and position it over here to the side. And as before, I'm going to desaturate, blend it with multiply. Seeing a, a, a consistency here with yep. blend modes? Step and repeat. And then again, I'm going to bring that opacity down just a little bit. And I'm also going to, again, add that coloring effect. So we're doing the same exact thing pretty much to each layer. We're using the multiply blend mode. We're adding a bit of a color and effect, color effect, color and effect. And then lastly, I'm just going to put a layer mask on that graphic and just fade out these edges here. Now, I don't want to use linear, of course, this time because it takes out areas I don't want it to. I'm going to use the radial gradient once again. And we'll just fade these areas right here. And that ultimately leaves room for me to add the text and everything like that. But it's just building element on top of element, blending them in, in very interesting ways and just making sure you get your fades and everything right so you don't see any harsh edges. But uh, that is pretty much how I went about building my composite. And that's, again, really, really quick. It's just a matter of just desaturating images using those blend modes. So if you need to get, a, get together a graphic and have a little bit of wow factor to it, there is a core little trick. I mean, originally it took me like 10 minutes last time. Right. So. And the, yeah. main, the main blending modes that we use all the time mm -hmm. are multiply, screen, overlay, and soft light. If mm -hmm. you know those four and what they do, you pretty much can, can rock a lot of things. Now, yes. there's some other trick ones, but uh, those are the ones you need to know. Definitely and we should. use multiply just about Every day. I don't think I was. I don't think it's a, a, a point at any time in Photoshop. I'm not using Multiply yeah. at some point. So, all right, let's take a quick break. We're gonna come back, and Pete's got some stuff. We got other all the cool things that you expect from Photoshop <laughs> user TV, and maybe not expect. We'll see. <laughs> come back with us. We'll be right back. Get the world's best photography, lighting, and Photoshop training at Photoshop World. Here's the top 10 reasons you should attend. It's three nonstop days of real world training where you can get personal attention and unlimited access to the world's top instructors in Photoshop and photography. When you attend, you'll have chances to experience hands-on live shoots and workshops, outrageous after hours parties and events, and hundreds of classes for all skill levels, along with dozens of opportunities to network with other attendees. In-depth one-on-one portfolio reviews from industry professionals and see new cutting edge technology. Plus, you can even earn continuing education and graduate level credits from attending. This is the must attend conference for photographers and Photoshop users. Use the promo code to get an extra $50 off. Photoshop World, the world's best Photoshop and photography conference. Well, hi everyone, we are back, and Pete's gonna show us a little cool something here in Photoshop in just a minute. But before he does that, I have to tell you something. You ready for this? I'm, I'm all a tingle. This, this news just arrived, and I have to tell you, is that Corey's D&D book, Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, you've all been waiting for it. Corey Barker's highly anticipated Down and Dirty Tricks, volume two is almost here. Stay tuned to kelby1.com on when you can pre-order your copy in the meantime. You can get your down and dirty fix by checking out Corey's classes over at kelby1.com. You know, stuff's okay. I mean, yeah, I, I, I watched it's just some okay. of it. It was good reading, though. It's good well reading. Well done. Yes. Way, to, way to follow the teleprompter. Yes, yes, awesome. Yes. I understood that he did a lot of research. Now, he didn't really do any research at all. <laughs> he just kind of winged it on that one. So be sure to check that out on kelby1.com. Um, I hear stuff's okay. I haven't looked at it myself. I don't I, think he's going to make it. I, 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 I can't wait to see it. I did pre order my copy, so. All right. With that, Pete. Is going to take it now. I see, I see something that I want to learn how to do. Did yeah. you make that from scratch? No, I didn't make that from scratch. I, I, I got that over on Photolia.com. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, continuing on with my theme of learning how to do things, finding images and going, man, I like that. I'd like to use some of those elements. This was another one that is an iPad, iPhone interface. And I thought I would show you how to make uh, gel-like buttons like this to hold your, your icons, your apps, or whatever. If you need to create an iPhone app or something like that, uh, this would be one of the things you may want to do. So once again, here, let's do this. I showed you how to do this last time. I've got the two files open. 
I go to window, arrange, and I'm gonna do two up vertical. And I'm gonna just take this, and I actually wanna switch that around. Let's do this, let's bring that over here. Let's try this again, get in there, there we go, arrange, two up vertical. And it's gonna fight me all the way. Well fine, we can fight you and just send you over here. Take that. All right, so this is the background that I, I'm using right here and I'm gonna simply come in and create a new blank layer. And so what I'm gonna wanna do to be able to create this gel uh, app holder is I'm gonna need to use my rounded rectangle tool. And now you're gonna have to kind of figure out, you play with it. What I usually do is I start to do one and go, no, that doesn't look right. And you could, you could adjust it some different ways, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just simply coming here and I'm gonna pick, what, about 55 pixel ratio and see how that does. And that actually looks pretty good. But what I forgot to do is I forgot to make sure I hold down my shift button to make sure this is perfectly square. And even though I'm gonna do it for, I'm gonna have a bunch of these, I'm gonna make this bigger, make one big one, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to do the uh, shrink it down and create copies of it. So I don't need to get a super precise measurement of this right now. Okay, so there's my base right there. So next thing I'm gonna do is, let's get rid of that right there, I don't need that. Uh, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to create a new blank layer and I'm gonna use this as my base for it. But what I wanna do is hold my command or control button and click on the thumbnail over here and it's loading up that selection but now I've got it highlighted on this new layer here. So what I'm gonna do is come over, I'm simply gonna choose my gradient, because you can look at it, if we, if we take a look over here, you can see that it's got a nice faded gradient coming across the top here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose my gradient, make sure it is foreground to transparent, white to nothing, and I'm just gonna simply, because of the way this is, I'm gonna drag from the top down. And it looks okay right now. Well, here's the thing that I can do. I could go ahead and deselect this, but since it's already selected, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my elliptical marquee tool. And now, right now, if I, if I start to do anything in here, it's just gonna move that around. But if I hold down my option button, it's gonna subtract from that selection. And I'm just simply gonna start dragging my elliptical marquee. The problem is it's not where I want it to be. But as long as I'm still holding my shape, uh, shift button, space bar. You know, I knew it was one of those. You, you, we use the same ones all the time. I finally got to it. Hold down your space bar, look what I can do. I can move my selection around, get it lined up where I want, and now actually I can drag it out even more. So I could actually reposition this so it looks pretty similar to the other one. And now I've got that selection that's similar to the one up top. Well, I could either invert this, or what I'm gonna do is simply hit Command or Control J and make a copy of that down below. And so you see, we start to get that gradient. However, I don't really like the way that looks, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat. Now that I've got the shape that I like, I'm gonna create a new selection. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna repeat this. Let's hide that. But I'm gonna start my gradient a little higher because I want a little more fade and I'm gonna drag across it. The length of your line that you draw with your gradient is gonna determine how the gradient spreads out and how it looks. So I want a little softer gradient. That looks a little bit better, and now I can simply fade that down a little bit if I like it. And here's the other thing. I decide that I like that, but when I started to look at the gradient, I, I really liked a little bit more action to it. So I'm gonna take and make another one, and I'm just gonna draw across like that to give it just a little kiss in the corner. So now you see that's before and that's after. And I like the way those two interact, so I'm simply gonna merge those together and I've got a little gradient action going there. Let's go back to the base here. And what I wanna do is I wanna drop the fill of this. What the fill is gonna do is it's going to sh hide whatever the main image is, but it's still gonna allow me to see what's going on in the layer styles. As soon as I drop the, the fill down, because I filled it with black, it kind of gives me that shadow look. But now when I double click on the layer to bring up the layer style, I can still do some things like add a stroke to it. And what you'll see is the stroke stays up there 100% even though I've dropped the fill. I can now come in and I can choose a nice bright 
stroke. You can choose whatever color you want. I'm just gonna stick with white. And then I can choose inside, outside, do whatever I want. I'm just gonna make this a sliver, just a sliver of it with one pixel, and then hit OK. And it's starting to look pretty good there. But this is the last little thing that I like to do to give it a little extra punch, is create a new blank layer, create, get your, your gradient, and I'm gonna do radial gradient, and I'm just gonna make a nice little circle. Now I'm just gonna hit Command or Control T and I'm gonna squish this down. And I'm gonna make it just kind of squish right in here, hit return. I actually wanna squish it a little bit more, just as if there's just a little bit of a kiss of light that's hitting the bottom of this. Looks like a little bit of a flare. A little bit of a flare, at least 15 pieces of flare. And then drop the opacity just slightly. And it's gonna be all these little gradients, these little mm -hmm. tidbits right in there that are really gonna sell this. Okay, now I've got my basic gel button there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all three of them, and then I'm gonna hold my shift button down and put them in a group. When I do that, now I can do things like I could even add a drop shadow to all of them in one shot, and I can change the direction, the distance if I want to, and it's sitting right there all nice and neat. And now I can make copies of that. Let's do a, first of all, I'm gonna change this now because I know I'm gonna change my size. I may wanna change the layout. Let's go ahead and convert that to a smart object. Now I can Command or Control T and simply make it smaller. Something about like that. I don't have to be super precise because it's a smart object. And now I can just make a copy. Oop, I didn't hold my shift button down. I wanna keep it in line, make a copy of that. Now hold it again. I'm holding my Alt or Option key and it's making a copy. You can see the layers are repeating here. And now I've got four of them. Once I do that, I group it, make a copy of that, bring that down, bring that down, bring that down. I highlight all four of those and I simply hit, center them horizontally, distribute the centers, and they're all nice and neat and evened up there. And now the great thing is if I don't like the way they're interacting or whatever, I just simply go back in and change one of them, go in and double click the the, the smart object and I can change all the effects and it will repeat that all the way through and I've got immediately, I've got a template set up that's gonna allow me to do all kinds of stuff for gel buttons for any kind of iPad setup that you want. Very quick, very easy. Just simply using gradients, a couple rounded corners and just knowing how to lay them on top of each other. Uh, that yep. is, of course, the big, biggest benefit of uh, smart objects is that you only have to do it once, and then it just cascades down to all of the different ones. As long yeah. as they're linked. Suppose you're doing this for an art director, and he says, yeah, that looks pretty good, but I'd like that gradient to have a different shape or something like that. If you've got it set up like this, you would have to go in, and it weren't, wasn't smart objects. You'd have to do one step at, at a time and change each one of these, whereas with smart objects, you go and change it once, and it, it permeates throughout all of them, makes that one change to all of them. Very, very nice. All right, we need to go ahead and wrap things up. But before we do, we of course have another Peach Pit ebook deal this week. And it's a book by Tyler Jones. It's called 100% Kid Book. That's interesting. It's written by kids, it's which written, is amazing. It's written by Tyler Jones is only six. Every bit of 10 <laughs> years old. No. no, be sure to check it out. It's at peachpit.com slash Kelby1. And you can use the Kelby code, Kelby1. It's the crazy. Discount code. I say Kelby code. And Kelby code, Kelby1. To go ahead and get your discount on that ebook, be sure to check that out as well. Also, we are giving away another book of our own this week. This week we have the Photoshop Compositing Secrets book by Mr. Matt Kluskowski. Look, I'm covering his name there. By Matt Kluskowski. Awesome bestseller book on compositing in Photoshop. If you are indeed at any level interested in compositing, make sure that you have this book. And how do you win this book, Pete? Well, Corey, you go over to kelby1.com slash contest, uh, excuse me, kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest. That's a mouthful. Go over to Photoshop User TV. Choose that one. Put in your name, your email address, your uh, social security, your mm -hmm. bank pin number, mm -hmm. and then leave some comments. And from that, we will draw one lucky winner and we will spend the rest of your folks' money. That is correct. Not. All right. <laughs> Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this yet again. Photoshop user TV, be sure to tune in next week. We've got all sorts of really cool stuff. I think I might even have a 3D thing finally this time. I, I've been I knew it, it had to be. It was I've coming. been putting You're it due. off, but I think it's finally time to go ahead and bring some 3D into yep. the show. All right, we will see you guys next week. On behalf of myself and Mr. Pete Collins,
Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See you later.